Aloha. Welcome to the Mr. G podcast. Today is December 13th, 2023. There's only 17 days, 18 days left in 2023. It's going to be 2024 soon. This is season two of the Mr. G Hawaii podcast. I believe it's only episode two. It's taking a long time, a lot of distractions. It's about 5.15 a.m., a warm 72 degrees here in Honolulu, the warmest place in the United States right now. You can't go anywhere where it's not cold other than Miami and Honolulu. Those are the only two places. So I'm very grateful, very lucky. I got all the street cats fed today. And this is the best time to do the podcast. This is the best time of year to do the podcast. It's still dark outside. It's somewhat cool. It's 72 degrees. And that is, you know, pretty warm. Uh, you know, we prefer 68, 69. It's been a hot year in Honolulu. It's been one of the hottest years in Hawaii in general. See the Maui fires in Lahaina and everything like that. It's been a drought. We finally got some rain today in the last few days. And that's very appreciative. I'm really excited about starting the second season of the Mr. G podcast. The first one, I made clips. Uh, I had AI make uh, thousands of clips that I uploaded on numerous platforms. It's something I'm extremely fucking proud of. You know why? Because I can do this better than just about anybody. So regardless of how many views I get, regardless of how many eyeballs I see, I know for goddamn sure if you're watching this, if you're listening to the sound of my voice... It's fucking good. It's so good that I got people hitting pots and pans outside my window trying to get me to stop. Anytime you do something in life, if other haters try to get you to stop, that means you're good at it, okay? Today's topic, we're going to talk about Beetlejuice, not the fucking weird-ass 90s movie. I hear they're making a sequel, but we're going to talk about Beetlejuice the Star because it's been in the news recently, uh, any clips of the Beetlejuice. If you're unaware, the Beetlejuice star is in the constellation Orion. Now, I've always had an attachment to the constellation Orion. I don't know why. Ever since I was a little kid, whenever I looked up at the sky, I would see those three stars in the belt, one, two, three, and I would see the sword coming down. And I guess at some point, I must have asked somebody, what is that constellation Orion? But before I even knew what it was, I would look up the sky and just be drawn to it, just be drawn to it. And to till today, wherever I'm at in the world, I look up in the sky and I can find Orion right away. And it's something uh, that's uh, uh, it, it, unexplainable to me. There's no reason why I should have that ability or that attachment to that constellation. But it's in the news recently because you hear of eclipses. It's usually an eclipse of the sun, a solar eclipse, or a lunar eclipse or the moon. This is a rare eclipse of a star in the Orion constellation, the Betelgeuse star. There's a comet or an asteroid supposedly flying in front of the star. And uh, I believe it was last night or the night before. Uh, so if you had binoculars or a telescope, you could zoom in on that star. And for a brief moment, for a few seconds, whatnot, it would uh, disappear. Now, that, that constellation, uh, from the top of my head, it's, it's not too far away as far as uh, stellar cosmic terms, light years. I believe it's maybe 10 light, less than 10 light years away. But still, it takes 10 years for that light to get to us. So... Uh, on the cosmic scale, you know, what we're watching actually happened a decade ago. Now, uh, I have something a little bit about Beetlejuice. Um, also, I'm going to give my college picks today for the bowl games. We'll, we'll do that after uh, the Beetlejuice. But let me just read you a little bit of something about Beetlejuice, the star. Um, once again, it's really great to uh, do these podcasts again. If you do something and you really enjoy doing it and you you're good at it, uh, don't let anyone tell you not. Don't say, oh, you're not getting enough viewers. Oh, it's this or that. If you know what you're doing, then don't listen to the naysayers. So Beetlejuice, a massive star bigger and brighter than our sun, will momentarily blink out next week when an asteroid passes in front of it, creating an eclipsable view to millions. The celestial event should only last for a mere seconds, which is still time for astronomers to make observations about the red superstar star in the constellation Orion. Millions of people along a narrow path of Earth should be able to catch a fleeting glimpse of the cosmic spectacle, and it actually happened on Monday night. The asteroid name is Leona, so an asteroid Leona flies in front of the star Betelgeuse. Now, Betelgeuse is a really important star. And uh, at just 10 million years old, Betelgeuse is considerably younger than our sun, our billion-year-old sun. 
Uh, however, its predicted fate as a supernova will experience a violent explosion within 100,000 years. And so it's made the star of one particular interest to astronomers who hope to create a map of the surface. Also, interesting fun fact, within the next 100,000 years, if humans survive, there will be a second sun. The supernova Betelgeuse will be brighter, not as bright as the sun, but there will be the sun, the moon, and Betelgeuse. And uh, maybe that's the reason I started off saying, for whatever reason, since I was a little kid, I look up at the sky, boom, Beetlejuice, boom, Orion. And future generations, maybe 1,000 years from now, maybe 10,000 years from now, God willing, humans still exist. They will they'll see a supernova and expect it to last a considerable amount of time as well, years, maybe decades. So that will be known as the Beetlejuice decades, when there was a third sun in the sky. But at this rate, it doesn't even seem like humans are going to make it, you know, past this century. You know, nuclear war seems like the biggest threat. And as technology advances and gets into the hands of everybody, uh, it just takes one crazy person with a suitcase uh, to create a nuclear winter and destroy the planet. So that's probably the most likely scenario for all of us. But hey, until then, let's continue doing the podcast, which reminds me the Mr. G podcast is available wherever you get podcasts, Spotify podcasts, Audacity podcasts. If you're watching the Mr. G podcast on YouTube or Twitter, don't judge how I look. This is how I dress. I'm Mr. G. I'm a fucking badass. I feed 100 street cats in the ghetto every morning at 4 a.m. People have chased me with box cutters, knives. I got haters galore. I've been called a legend since I was 14 years old. So, yeah, I want to dress like this. It's hot. And time for my Super Bowl picks, okay? Super Bowl picks. I don't watch pro football. That's a Pro football is a joke. It's a big commercial. It's staged. It's set up. I watch college football, and I'm a very accurate bowl picks so here we go college football picks you get that ai clips college football clips starting now all right boise state versus ucla i've seen boise state played it this year they're not very good ucla is an underrated team ucla is a two and a half point underdog so take ucla minus two and a half next up i got the independence bowl cal berkeley had the lowest attendance of any university this year, of any big five school. Nobody went to those games. Everybody's protesting and just like Berkeley, you know, it's the best school in the United States. Not talking shit, but when it comes to football, they have a de decent football team. Nobody really cares. But you know who has a better football team? Texas Tech. Texas Tech is in the Big 12. I saw Texas Tech play twice this year. They gave the Longhorns, you know, who were playing for a national championship, all they could handle. Texas Tech is only favored by three points. Take Texas Tech minus a three. Next up, I got uh, Marshall versus UTSA. I've been to the UTSA, University of Texas, San Antonio campus many times. They've had a football program for just over a decade. Marshall has had a football program for, you know, 50 years. Marshall is a legendary football program. They're taking the Frisco Bowl seriously. Marshall is a nine and a half point underdogs. Bowl games are the best games to bet on the money line, and you get two to three, three to one on your money. So just of these picks right here, if, you, if you're a gambler, take Marshall to win against UTSA. You get four to one, five to one. You bet $10, you win $50. You bet $100, you win $500. Take that. Marshall, my, nine and a half point underdog is going to pull the upset. Next up, Georgia Tech at UCF. UCF, everybody loves University of Central Florida, but they're overrated. Georgia Tech can play with anybody in the country. They proved that in their rivalry game against Georgia. They gave Georgia all they could handle. Georgia Tech is going to cover four and a half points. UCF favorite. All right, next up, um, Bowling Green versus Minnesota. Minnesota is one of the only teams this year that won five games but still was invited to a bowl. They appreciated being invited to the Quick Lane Bowl on Tuesday, December 26th. And Minnesota is, is going to cover five and a half points versus Bowling Green, a small school that doesn't really have a chance. They're just happy to be there. All right, next up, I got a really good pick. Uh, Rice versus Texas State. Texas State is four and a half point underdogs. My father was a professor at Texas State. My sister graduated from Texas State. My mom received her master's degree from Texas State. I know about Texas State. Bet on Rice. Bet on Rice to cover four and a half points. Rice may not win. If Rice loses, it's just going to be by a field goal. Next up, I got a, a big star pick. UNLV versus Kansas. I saw both teams play this year. 
Kansas is an 11 and a half point favorite. This is one of the only times Kansas football is a huge favorite. Kansas has a great team this year. Kansas is going to show off in the guaranteed rate bowl against UNLV. Kansas is going to cover 11 and a half points. This is one of those things where you take the biggest line that you see on all the football games. Who's the biggest favorite? Kansas, 11 and a half. Take Kansas to cover the points because they can't make the line big enough. Also, take the over. A lot of people parlay Kansas to cover 11 and a half and the over 63 and a half. That's one of the only times I take over unders is when I'm parlaying the, the, the big favorite of the day. All right. We'll do just a couple more here. Then I'm going to have a special guest give his uh, opinion about American football. Uh, North Carolina has a great team. They're playing in the Dukes Mayo Bowl. I like them against West Virginia. USC is a seven and a half point underdog against Louisville. That's because USC's star quarterback isn't playing. It doesn't matter. USC has star linemen. USC has star running backs. USC is deep. USC is going to cover seven and a half against Louisville. I saw Louisville play this year. Louisville cannot beat USC by seven and a half in the Holiday Bowl. Next up, Oklahoma State versus Texas A&M. Oklahoma State, I saw, saw them play against Texas. They gave them all the good handle. Oklahoma State, I like them pulling the underdog. Take them on the money line at three and a half point underdogs against Texas A&M. Oklahoma State, I like. All right, um, the Pop-Tarts Bowl. That's a bowl everybody's going to be watching because the interesting thing about the Pop-Tarts Bowl, everybody knows Pop-Tarts, the you know American breakfast toaster crap full of processed garbage. Uh, but the Pop-Tarts Bowl has a huge Pop-Tart mascot, and the team that wins the Pop-Tarts Bowl gets to eat the mascot. Apparently, the mascot is made of Pop-Tarts. And so at the end of this bowl, instead of giving out a trophy, instead of giving out a cup, they're just going to have the whole football team just munch and eat the fucking mascot. So everybody wants to see that, right? Who doesn't want to see a bunch of football players you know, eat a Pop-Tart mascot? And that game, North Carolina State versus Kansas State. Kansas State, uh, the school my mom got her undergraduate, they're three-and-a-half-point underdogs. Kansas State almost went to the Big 12 championship. That's a solid bet, Kansas State, to cover three-and-a-half points. If uh, anything on here, that's one of my solid picks I've seen Kansas State play. I haven't seen North Carolina State play, but I don't think they can hang with Kansas State. All right, Oklahoma versus Arizona. Oklahoma's quarterback went into the transfer portal uh, he's from Mililani, Hawaii, actually. Uh, but Arizona's three and a half point favorites because of that. I still like Oklahoma. They're deep. Uh, they have running backs. They have offensive linemen. They have wide receivers. I think they have second string. They have third string. And uh, I'll just give you maybe one or two picks. Iowa versus Tennessee. I like Iowa to cover seven points. Um, Ohio State, Missouri. Missouri has the best journalism school in the United States. I like Ohio State minus two and a half. And uh, Florida State versus Georgia. A lot of people are watching that game. Georgia is a 14-point favorite. Um, I, I take Florida State. They they have to be playing with, with a chip on their shoulder. They they have to cover 14 points, you think, you th unless Georgia just wants to make a statement. Uh, but I really like what the voters did in making this game, Florida State versus Georgia, the two teams that were left out of the college playoff. Florida State has every right to complain and say that they've been there. They have an undefeated season. Georgia can't really say much. They lost to Alabama in the SEC championship. So Georgia has a lot to prove. They want to destroy Florida State. This is what the game would have been if Georgia had lost to Alabama. Florida State would have taken Alabama's spot, and Georgia would have still been number one. So it would have been number one, Georgia, versus number four, Florida State. So Florida State, if you really thought that you should have been there, we'll see. And that's the game everybody's really watching and looking forward to. Of course, we have the two championship games, the University of Texas versus the University of Washington, two of the three top academic schools in the United States. Also, the two universities with the best college radio stations, KVRX at UT Austin and KEXP at the University of Washington, Seattle. But so and you know who I'm who I'm pulling for hook them horns, Longhorns all the way. I want to see Longhorns Bama. But uh, those are my picks. Write them down. Take a picture. Uh, they say if you bet 60%, you can get rich. I guarantee you guys, those picks right there are more than 60%. Don't listen to me. Don't listen to me. It's fine because I'm still making waves and doing what I want and, and doing what God wants, regardless if anybody listens to me. So with that being said, I just want to have a special guest. He's an American football expert from Australia. And uh, he's um, his name is uh, Spidey Turin. So uh, everybody... Uh, 
round of applause for uh, the special guest here. Yeah. Right. So uh, I think American football is uh, not going to lie. I'm not <clears throat> not uh, not really interested in American football, but <clears throat> it's, I appreciate it. Um, and not really into gambling, and because I've got an addictive personality, and um, yeah, I want to not start a new addiction. Um, but yeah, Do they have American football in Australia. Uh, no, American football does not exist in Australia. They have Australian football. Yeah, Australian rules football, which I'm also not interested in. I, I dislike um, uh, pretty much all sports. Um, not not to be a negative Nancy, but I just have separate interests. Um, what's the most popular sport in Australia? In Australia, the most popular sport is like cricket, or like uh, uh Australian rules football AFL. And um, yeah, this is my first time on the podcast. And yeah, it's cool. Why don't you tell a little bit about yourself? I'm a Spidey and uh, I'm a, a nuisance streamer, but I'm um, doing the hard yards to um, see if I can handle the, the fame. And uh, I'm staying sober so I can handle the fame. And yeah. What, what do you think about Hawaii? Yeah, Hawaii is very practical. Uh, I think Hawaii. Uh, what fashion you'd say? Uh, I think like, I think um, tourists uh, that come here for like a, a couple of days for, on holiday uh, failed to realize this is like not a holiday. I just, not everyone here is on holiday, uh, especially like if you are, uh, live in certain areas. But it's, it's uh, yeah, like I uh, have to do a lot of stuff to uh, be here, like wake up every morning super early, um, which is uh, uh, un- never, I want to never complain about it. I'm very grateful for it. Um, and it is a lot to ask for, but I'm, I am grateful to be here. And, I, and yeah. If I, What's your favorite yeah. town in Hawaii? Favorite town in Hawaii is uh, um, Koalina Resort. That's the best town. Oh, really? Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. It's also hot as fuck, guys. I don't know how the fuck it's so cold outside. Like, it's fucking freezing outside. It's like fucking raining outside. And it's so fucking hot inside all the time, guys. I have no idea how it's so this, this fucking hot, guys. I have no idea. But it's it's cool. I'm going to well, go out and do live stream. Studio lights. Yeah, yeah guys. Yeah. yeah, sweating my ass off. But it's cool. It's cool. I'm going to go out soon and do my live stream. And yeah. If you want to follow the service. Uh, yeah, guys. Uh, Spidey's my name. You don't, you don't have to follow me. Uh, it's cool. Uh, yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Mr. G. Go support Mr. G. And yeah. Okay, so he doesn't want you to follow him. All right, everybody. The Mr. G Podcast is available wherever you listen to podcasts. Apple Podcasts, Amazon Podcasts. Full episodes of the Mr. G Podcast are available on YouTube and Twitter. Uh, Thank you guys for listening. Everybody have a great day.